I, I like to uh, know my audience. Who here is not CS? Do we have double E's? Do we have MBA folks? Double E, uh, please, you know, I need one. Okay, great. So, like, uh, uh, a handful of double E's? Okay. Right, so we won't talk only about the software, we'll talk about the hardware as well. Um, we're going to cover everything anyway, uh, but I won't skip the hardware part. Uh, let's see, um, any business this folks? Even if your background Thank is you. WE or, or, or CS. Okay, 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 great. Uh, my business cards are here, you can grab them afterwards. Uh, have some props, yeah, we'll get to them. I have a lot more material than we can cover in an hour. Just uh, I'm always ready for any questions. I, I can I can jump around. Um, do you all know what Quanergy does? We uh, we do. Uh, I mean, it's really hard to not know what Quanergy does these days. We're almost in the news every day. We've been getting almost every award. You know, top ten startup, top ten this, and top two this, and. Um, which is great, but that comes with lots of uh, hard work and uh, resulting business activity, which is also great. Uh, but that comes with very little sleep, which is OK. Um, so we make uh, a LiDAR. We, we are famous for our core technology, which is the solid state LiDAR. Having said that, uh, the software behind the solid state LiDAR is where the brains are. And uh, ultimately, the, uh, we have multiple layers of uh, application uh, and uh, perception, smart perception software, and then scenario analysis, decision uh, making, and so on. All of these layers are laid on top of the basic uh, point cloud that you get out of a, a 3D LiDAR sensor. Uh, we'll talk about all this. And then there's the data you collect, the big, the big shovel that we use to, to uh, uh, to fill the dump truck that the cloud is uh, and get things processed uh, and uh, fused between different sensors, not, not just uh, for LiDAR. We'll talk about fusion between LiDAR and video and radar and so on. Uh, the company is three and a half years old, but in terms of introduction, uh, I worked on the core chip that uh, is the core of the solid state LiDAR 25 years ago. For my PhD, it was uh, sponsored by DARPA. Uh, it was the biggest chunk of my PhD at Columbia. Uh, then I went on to get uh, business degrees from, uh, in this order, the Harvard, MIT, and Stanford. Uh, this is my fourth startup. Uh, all my startups are based on the hardware part of them is always uh, silicon photonics. I've, I've uh, built and sold three companies. Two are telecom companies. One is a uh, solar company, and now this is uh, laser sensing. But that's really uh, that's exactly what I worked on for my PhD. Uh, and so, without so to avoid uh, too much suspense and uh, people wondering what the product looks like, let's just show it to you right now. Uh, that's the solid state LiDAR. Uh, you know, you compare it with what we commonly call the, the KFC bucket on the Google car. Uh, this is a smaller, lighter, lower power consumption, completely solid state. Macro level, micro level. So this, is, this does not have micro MEMS mirrors that the, that the naked eye does not see. No, nothing moves. Uh, truly solid state based on optical phase array, beam interference. It's, like, it's an optical version of the phase array radar. Um, and now this, you never see it on a vehicle, so it's not only small, it's also hidden. It's always behind, behind, inside the side view mirrors, behind, in the bumper, behind the grill. And so it, the, the a car that has this basically look, look like, looks like it has nothing. And that's the point. That's the kind of car you want to buy. You're not going to buy a car that uh, looks like it has a lab bench on top. It's, it's cool for pilots and, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but when you buy a luxury vehicle, you, you don't want it to have a bunch of uh, instruments on top. So uh, our, our mission basically is just to do five things. That's all we do. We, we save lives, energy, space, time, and money. 
uh, and so it's saving lives is safety, and then the, the other four are efficiency. So uh, we are energy efficient, space efficient, time efficient, and uh, cost efficient, our solutions. My background in the industry, I'm going to just flash this. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Uh, just so you see uh, the companies I worked with and sold, and then I say stay, stay with the parent company for many years, actually, typically, which is not common for, for, for entrepreneurs. Um, and then we, and we did some acquisitions over time. Long story short, I started uh, after my PhD at, at Allied Signal in Morristown, New Jersey. We became Honeywell after we acquired Honeywell. Started three companies, sold them, sold one company to Corning, one to DuPont, one to SK Energy in Korea. I became the CTO of Sun Edison and then uh, now um, Qual Energy. Uh, what, what we are about disruption through innovation uh, and uh, th through business model innovation, technical and business model innovation. Uh, we disrupt the transportation space as well as security industrial automation mapping, digital navigation, as well as location-based services. Uh, in mapping, we are mapping the world. Make, make, make an, a unit like this, the solid-state LiDAR, for a couple, making it available for a couple hundred bucks, meaning our cost, you can guess, is about half of that. Uh, allows it to go in every vehicle now. It's no longer the, the $80,000 unit that you see on, on a uh, typical uh, Google car. We love Google, by the way. Not not trying to say anything bad about Google. It's just I mean it, they use it to, to develop software, right? So so whatever works to develop software, that's fine. So but in that case, when when it's a mechanical lidar and you're using it for development to develop software, um, if it breaks, okay, you go back to the shop, you replace it. But when you're using it to uh, actually enable an autonomous vehicle and uh, you're taking a nap, it's not as cool when it breaks. Uh, it has to be solid state. And that's not just our opinion, because we have this. We have this because that's what the customer said. Um, you know, location-based services. Ultimately, you can imagine a smart IoT Internet of Things where each thing doesn't just tell you where it is. It shows you everything that's going on around it. And that's a very smart uh, IoT. Um, so business model basically, yes, we do have core hardware technology. We have a lot more software than hardware, multiple layers that I described, and ultimately we, we, we will get into data services. And that's our uh, ecosystem. Uh, we have the, the core hardware, the, the, the data processing on board uh, that controls the systems that control the, the vehicle. And uh, we build maps using that data. We have uh, we communicate in real in real time using a cellular connection uh, observations. An observation can be any object around you, a pedestrian vehicle, debris, pothole, etc. Uh, it can be uh, a traffic condition, a weather condition, uh, accident, so on. All of that gets communicated immediately via a cellular connection. On average, a car driving in moderate uh, traffic it collects about 25 observations per minute. Each one takes only one kilobyte to communicate. Type, location. Uh, driving uh, a couple hours a day, uh, five, uh, five, five days a week, that's really just 50 megabytes per, per, per month. So it's not uh, that uh, b bandwidth hungry. So any very basic uh, data plan can, can, can handle that. Then you need the Wi-Fi connection to uh, upload to the cloud a, uh, the base map. You're collecting observations, communicating those in real time to everybody else who has a system like yours, so they, they're aware of what's going on. Uh, then uh, the base map that we're, where we are building in the cloud, a global centimeter accurate daily updated uh, colors, colored point cloud map, uh, that is uh, uh, certainly a lot more uh, data intensive. If you drive eight hours a day, five days uh, a week, uh, in one week you'll collect about a terabyte of data. So you definitely need, for a couple, uh, for a couple uh, hundred gigs per day, uh, you need uh, a Wi-Fi connection. 
every vehicle has 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 Wi-Fi connection at some point. Even so, for 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 a uh, personal vehicle, that's easy, right? I mean, you're gonna park your car in, in a garage at some point. Um, even a UPS truck that's driving most of the time at some point is gonna go to a loading dock to get loaded, and it's gonna be waiting there for a couple hours. That's enough to upload all the data it collected, uh, and it downloads, refreshes deltas based on what everybody else has collected for the area of interest. So in our case, say the Bay Area. So uh, an IoT uh, roadmap would look something like this. It started in the early days in RO, uh, uh, RFID used to be considered, be considered something uh, you stick on something and now okay, everything is tagged and you have, you have an IoT. These days it's much, much smarter. It's, uh, you have um, uh, you have sensors that uh, detect, classify, uh, track objects. You have uh, the ability to crunch on board uh, uh, that, that, that data to, to make decisions uh, uh, using data fusion between different sensor types, LiDAR, camera, and uh, radar. Uh, so, and uh, if you're doing that in the context of deep learning, uh, now you need uh, an advanced processor. You need a GPU. We are working very closely with NVIDIA. We also work with Freescale and others um, on 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 the all the CUDA development. So a new paradigm in 3D sensing involves uh, basically disruptive uh, uh, hardware uh, technologies, uh, 3D sensing lidar that are solid state. Uh, uh, embedded processors uh, based on GPU like NVIDIA's and uh, a uh, good performance uh, but low cost uh, IMU. And those are available these days based on MEMS. Uh, then you have, uh, so you have those core technologies, you have advanced systems that use these technologies and those can be uh, autonomous driving system, ADAS, or they support smart homes, smart cities, 3D aware device, devices, we'll talk about all this. and. Uh, Ultimately, uh, smart solutions uh, uh, include that the global map I talked about, which is centimeter accurate in 3D, in color, and so on, uh, updated daily. Uh, GPS free navigation. When you have a map that's that, uh, when you have a high definition map that's really high quality, high high accuracy, now you can navigate uh, uh, offline. You can navigate offline. You don't you don't need a, a GPS to navigate. The, the whole issue of uh, urban canyons, what happens when you're in a tunnel and so on, goes away when you have on board all the information you need to navigate and you're sensing constantly and uh, locating yourself. And uh, the smart IoT just is just such a broad space and uh, ultimately will, uh, will uh, change uh, lives as we know them. Um, the... We, we address many markets. Let me jump ahead, show you the big bullet, boring bullet list. Uh, it's going to make you dizzy about uh, three dozen different applications. Uh, we bucket them into four pillars, uh, transportation very broadly defined, uh, industrial automation, mapping terrestrial and, uh, and, and aerial, and security. Security is defined as everything from smart home to smart cities to smart borders. And uh, here are some uh, some of the uh, some examples of applications, and uh, uh, I point your attention to the fact that, uh, for instance, in vehicles, you know that that's almost obvious at this point because we talked so much about this. It's such a hot space; you probably have a good idea how how, how that's used. But as you can imagine, also uh, every drone company wants to work with us. You have the lightest weight, lowest power draw. Uh, you know. Uh, uh, highest resolution, lowest cost uh, sensor, uh, smallest size. So uh, that's a no-brainer for, for drones. Uh, and ultimately, we're going to be able to fit in a, uh, in a um, handheld device and clothing and so on uh, when the whole device is on a single chip, uh, which prepackaging has about this size. When you package it, you know, it's a, a few millimeters thick, uh, and now you have a high-end um, 
uh, high performance uh, type of uh, lidar. This is not like the gaming lidar you can buy these days for, for uh, that can, that works that has only a ten foot range it, that works only indoors when there's no sunlight and it has low accuracy if you walk around the house and you come back to where you started, it, it looks like you're off by 10 feet and so on. That's not where, this works outdoors, has a 300 meter range, works in bright sunlight, has high resolution. This is the kind of thing that you, if, it's, if you had this on a cell phone or on any device, you can go like this and map big architectural structure. You can map whatever you want. Uh, capture a, a scene or uh, just by waving this around. So that's, that's, that's the future. Everything we do is by design based on silicon CMOS. So all the individual components that go into making the, this particular uh, multi-chip module based uh, solid state LiDAR, when it becomes a single ASIC, can be integrated on a single substrate because uh, it's uh, all based on standard silicon CMOS. And that's why it's also a very low cost. You see the, the business part of, of this device. You see the, this chip right here, which is about uh, four by four millimeters. You can you, you can calculate how many you can get out of a 12 inch wafer, and uh, the yields have been phenomenal. We have not had a chip that does not work because we have uh, you know we have uh, a uh, developed calibration uh, hardware boards and calibration uh, algorithms that uh, uh, calibrate out imperfections in fab. So, so far, after we do that, we run the calibration, so far every chip has worked. Um, so th th that gives you an idea how, how we, we can hit the kind of numbers we've been talking about. Uh, this is, we sell this a couple hundred bucks in, in volume, and this is gonna be below 100, potentially below $50 in volume. Uh, but I told you about, what it does, the grade, the range, the, the environmental conditions that it can deal with and so on. So I don't want to hear I can buy a, a gaming LiDAR for 10 bucks. You know, this is just, it's, this is just totally different. Um, so the pro, you know, the products we, we, we build based on these technologies and the, these capabilities, they lead in cost, performance, reliability, size, weight, power consumption. Let me clarify by performance, I mean, I mean specifically range, how long it is, uh, accuracy uh, uh, as well as uh, resolution. So, we do uh, accuracy. We define as uh, uh, you know uh, depth accuracy. Resolution is uh, lateral resolution. Um, reliability. We both mean lifetime. How long it takes before mean time between failure is is very high. Mean time between failure for this is over a hundred thousand hours of operation. Mechanical LIDARs typically have mean time between failure below 1,000 uh, hours of operation. Some of them have 100 hours of operation. Uh, as well as, so lifetime is one thing, and the other thing is the ability to do uh, signal processing and drop out false signals, identify false signals from, 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 uh, from uh, false positives and false negatives from real signals. Uh, in rain, snow, dust, any any time our laser pulses hit an aerosol, any kind of solid in the air, they get broadened. And when we see that signature, we know it's not a real return. But when they hit a real object, pedestrian vehicles, etc., we don't we don't see that effect. The, so uh, I'll show you some examples that were actually an example that was run live at the NVIDIA booth at CES where they, ha they had the train and they had video and, LIDAR and our LiDAR and you'll see the difference. Uh, so before, so that was the application part. Before we get into the more technical part, any, any, any questions about what the product is and the technologies behind it? We'll talk later about how the technologies work and, you know, what, you know, the appetite of different markets. So, so this is the part where we want to discuss more markets and applications and address any questions you might have. I have another interesting, how many do you have in the car? In the minimum configuration has two, front right, front left. That, that's all you need. Uh, and we are going to embed video in this LiDAR, so just for color, not for perception. Some people use video for perception. I just want to be able to see 
the, the traffic light. I want to be able to, to read signs. And I want to colorize the, uh, the point cloud to, to just create a data set that's just more valuable. Uh, two units. This shows the advantages of LiDAR versus radar versus video. No one disagrees that LiDAR is the most capable perception uh, sensor. Uh, some people argue that it's an overkill when it was very expensive before we, we came along. Uh, people were arguing that um, it's an overkill. It's just it, it's too capable. You know, you don't need something that's that capable. You can do okay with a whole bunch of uh, with the suite of sensors, including ultrasonic sensors, video cameras, and radar. Uh, a total of 24 sensors, 12 ultrasonic sensors, six radar, eight video cameras, uh, and you can get the job done under most conditions on a highway in, in good weather. Uh, but now with with the, with the, uh, with the introduction of, of this ladder to, to the market, you know, uh, you won't he hear anyone say that uh, lidar is not needed. Uh, be before they were justifying why they're not using it, it's the cost. Uh, uh, yeah. Anyway, why is radar better than lidar in some cases? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the main case is uh, fog. In very thick fog, uh, that's the weakest. Uh, that's the weakest link for. Uh, for the, the, radar, the, the lidar laser you're using, right? We're using 905 nanometer, so we can stay in silicon CMOS. That's why. That's why exactly. I want to be able to detect in silicon. Silicon stops detecting at 1100 nanometer. I want to be below that, and I want to use lasers that are already produced for different markets at very low cost. You know, I want to buy my laser chip for for a couple of bucks. Uh, you could go to 1550. Uh, now you have to detect in 3.5 compound semiconductors, you know, in gas based uh, detectors. Uh, and uh, you have, you know, then, and, and you, you can use a higher power laser. But so the laser becomes expensive, the, the detector is expensive, everything becomes more expensive. So, what's your, what's your being with? Well, there's some divergence. So at the, at the and we actually have the capability. I'll, I'll, I'll describe seven unique capabilities we have because this is solid state and it does not have, have a f physical configuration that determines the collimation. It's all uh, software controlled. Uh, what I can give you is the minimum spot size. You can make it as big as you want. The minimum spot size at 100 meters is 3.5 centimeters. Uh, typical mechanical LiDAR such as the one on the Google car, at 100 meter, it has a spot size of two meters. And now we have one and a half inch with this. But you can make it as big as you want if you want. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about all the, this unique uh, capability. So uh, we always recommend having two LIDARs, uh, front right, front left, and two radar, forward, looking forward and looking back. And that's a complete system in terms of the sensing suite. What? What frequency radar are you using with your LiDAR? Uh, 66 gigahertz. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, our partner is, uh, our closest radar uh, partner and tier one partner in general is uh, Delphi. And so we, we use their, uh, their radar. Uh, yeah, so this shows now uh, physically uh, an installation you know, uh, the Google car that we all know and love the, with, the, with the scaffolding on top that holds the, 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 the bulky, heavy unit, so on, uh, which is fine for, for, for R&D. And uh, this vehicle was a gift to us from our partner, Mercedes-Benz, uh, and we demonstrated that live at, uh, at CES in, uh, two months ago in, in January. So, the, the, this black fascia was actually designed for us by Delphi. It's IR transparent. Basi it's basically the same material that we make this cover out of. IR has more than 95% transmission through this. Uh, so you, you don't see the LiDAR, and that's the beauty. You just see some, some shiny black uh, fascia. Uh, it looks beautiful, and it's something that people would buy. It looks stunning, and you don't see any contraption on the outside. 
and uh, basically for a total of a thousand one thousand dollars you can have a full autonomous vehicle system you can make a vehicle autonomous with a system that has two lidars two radar accessories software plus margin one thousand people used to think that it would take if you look at some reports uh, uh, written by the Robo robotics office of the US Army and so on three years ago they used to say it, would, it takes about two hundred thousand dollars to make a, a, a truck autonomous and now we're down to one thousand this is our roadmap so I have to say the first uh, LiDAR we made is also mechanical because it's easy we, could, we were able to get to, to market quickly and we still had the smallest size lightest weight lowest cost highest performance, highest reliability, and uh, uh, you know, uh, lowest power consumption uh, com compared to any other mechanical LiDAR. But still, it was mechanical. It was not solid state. Solid state has all these advantages to a greater extent, and it is completely solid state. Um, uh, ultimately, everything will, will be on one chip. You embed that in, in a cell phone, in your clothing, in your hat. I mean, when you think of the applications, I mean, this can make blind people see. You can send uh, a chirp or audio or s some kind of even a brain signal that allows a blind person to see. Uh, the applications are almost limitless. So is your chirp about the 100 picosecond range or something like that? Yeah, about that, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. You must have looked into that, yeah. No, I used to work in radar. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> you see the, the pricing here? Well, say it again. These won't numbers. Yeah, yeah. And uh, as I point out here, the uh, video cameras will be integrated in this just for color. Everything we do, everything we're doing now and we'll do in the future will, will be all solid state. Uh, our first vehicle, which, is all, which was also a gift from uh, Mercedes-Benz, uh, we mounted our mechanical LiDARs on it. Not, you know, they're smaller, they're about this big, the size of a... a a uh, small coffee mug, uh, you know, but still it was sitting on the outside on some, on, on the baggage rack and so on. Uh, it's not as easy to integrate that into a, uh, into the body of the vehicle. But that's just the Gen 1, which, uh, which is not for automotive applications. That, that's still fine for, for uh, security applications, static applications. The problem with the vehicle, you hit potholes, there's vibration, it's, it's, that's, it's not an environment for a mechanical solution. Uh, we, if it's a static installation, a security installation, and uh, a static installation, uh, mechanical LiDAR might be okay. It gives you 360 view. Uh, this one, as you can imagine, well, theoretically, the most you can get out of the face of a chip is 180 degrees, right? You're not going to start to send light out, out the back of the chip, right? So we actually use the central 120 degrees to get the sweet spot of, of, of scanning. If you go too far to the edge, uh, the range gets, gets uh, the, you know, the, the amplitude of the signal gets, uh, decreases and the, the range decreases. So this is 120 degrees. A mechanical 360, if you have, if it's sitting on, on a pole and, and doing uh, monitoring for road intersection, uh, uh, railroad intersection, monitoring some kind of safe site, uh, industrial uh, facility, an oil and gas field, whatever, whatever it might be, uh, a, a border. I mean, th this is, you know, I mean, instead of building a big concrete wall, uh, wall you know, Trump should consider you. you <laughs> exactly, I know. I, I, I can see your faces. They don't let me start either. Uh, but, you know, all kidding aside, you know, the, you could have uh, one of these every f 500 meters or so, and uh, it, it's a smart, it's smart because it's gonna see as soon as someone starts to approach, and you, uh, you dispatch secu security can be sitting in an air conditioned office, and you dispatch someone when there's a known uh, event, as opposed to patrolling the U.S. Mexico border or whichever border, right? Uh, it's, it's, it tracks, it detects tracks, and uh, it's very uh, persistent, uh, meaning uh, our software is, 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 uh, is so smart that once it knows that there was something here and 
if someone hides behind the bush, it's going to remember that sucker just, just hid behind the bush and I'm going to wait till he appears again. It's not that, you know, you cannot, it's, it's very, very persistent. Um, we have, you know, uh, eight patents uh, filed. They should start issuing soon. The company is three and a half years old. Uh, we start to file patents about one year into the company, and um, they, with, over the next year, they should start to issue. We have about 15 more in, in preparation. You, you've seen this, you know, uh, uh, you, you see the real thing here, so you don't need to spend time on this. It's nine by six by six centimeters. Um, so the principle of operation, it's, it's an optical phase array. Uh, an optical phase array, you can take pictures if you want. We're going to give you the slides as well. Yeah. Um, the, basically, the, the business part is, is this, this chip here. So it's a, a chip of about the, the, this. I don't know if you can see from, from afar, but, but it, the chip, the, the business part is this piece of silicon that's about 4 by 4 millimeters. How many arrays do you have there? Uh, this is uh, one array that, that scans in the 2D space. This, is, this has a 120 by 120 degree field of view. Um, this is, of course, a cartoon. The, the actual circuit is a lot more complex. Uh, when you add the different, uh, the, the, uh, there's the photonic circuit, there's the, the interconnect uh, uh, layer to, to, to bring the control signals, there's the actuation elements uh, and the out-of-plane coupling that sends the light from being guided inside the chip to come in out to come non, non basically normally to the chip and now those beams by controlling their phases we can get them to create a spot size of any size pointed in any direction within the entire field of view that gets calibrated once in the factory and it's good for the lifetime Uh, some unique capabilities uh, that no other LiDAR has, only because this is solid state. Uh, you can adjust the, 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 the window of, of interest within the field of view. So if, this is, if, you, if the unit gives you 120 by 120 degrees, you might say, I'm interested for this application in, in 120 by maybe 10 degrees. If it's a vehicle, looking mostly at the horizon and so on. If it's a big mining uh, vehicle that's a three-story tall and it's looking at you know people walking down and it's, and it's trying to not you know f flick the dump truck that's trying to fill and so on it, they would probably use the, the full 120 by 120 it depends on the application and smart home applications you also want to see everything that's going on around you for security application that's actually a question I had for you in terms okay. of mining yeah um, if you're using yeah a controller that sort of is like Rio Tinto mining company the firm you guys are using with your earth movers and stuff like that with your LiDAR? I'm sorry, what was the question? I was just wondering if Rio Tinto, the Rio Tinto Mining Company was the company that was using your LiDARs on no. their earth movers. No. Okay. Um, let me think if any uh, mining company... I'll, I'll show you some customers that, whose names are public. I'm not going to disclose any... Uh, customer names where we don't have the their approval to to the, none of the mining companies gave us the okay to disclose their name. Uh, I can tell you, our top two mining companies one is uh, American, one is Japanese. Um, uh, distribution of points when you, when you collect a point cloud uh, in a mechanical system, everything is set so it has multiple layers that are spinning or scanning or oscillating. Distance between them is set. You know the, you know, the uh, resolution of uh, data collection is set. Here you can change the point uh, distribution based on the application. You can, you can say I, I want higher point density around along the horizon, where I'm looking at the at what's going on on the road, trying to detect every little thing. Uh, you know, little a baby, a small animal, a pothole, and so on. Uh, soda can, debris that fell off a truck or something. Uh, but when I'm looking up and down, when I'm looking down, I just want to see the lane markings. When I'm looking up, I mainly want to see bridges, signs, or if there's a road uh, in front of you that, uh, that has uh, an upslope, you want to actually detect the, the vehicles on it before you, uh, you, you climb up that slope. Uh, 
uh, random access. You can do completely random access with, with, with the system. It takes the same amount of time to uh, go from uh, any direction and any, with any spot size to any other direction with any, with any other spot size. Uh, so that has advantages uh, based on the scene you're looking at. Uh, also in terms of signal to noise ratio because when uh, on, the re on the receiver side if the spot you just hit you did not just hit before that the, uh, uh, the adjacent spot you don't have electron leakage and that helps you with signal to noise ratio so you can jump around have an algorithm that has optimal uh, configuration for for the sequence in which you you, you jump around you ha we have zoom in zoom out capability which is unheard of in, in the world of lidar that that's equivalent to saying in a mechanical LiDAR, I'm going to take my glass lens or plastic lens and actually deform it every microsecond, you know, change its shape and its property. Impossible. Uh, as you know, you know a, a lens, let's say a glass lens based on its thickness, you know, delays light by, 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 uh, by you know, by, by uh, uh, you know, the, the factor that has to do with the uh, refractive index. So you, you, you uh, uh, how, so, so you know, y there's not nothing you can do about changing the property of the lensing uh, assembly. Uh, here, we can change the phase uh, value. We can slow down the light with a signal, uh, which would be equivalent to changing the at every at a million points on a lens. Equ it's equivalent to changing the thickness of the glass. So that gives you the ability to uh, do zoom in, zoom out. Uh, we can change the frame rate. You have each sensor has collects half a million points per second, one every two microseconds. So um, you can distribute those any way you want across however many frames you want. You can have uh, 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 a thousand frames per second, each one having 500 points, or you can have one frame per second having half a million points, or and anything in between. Um, we can also enhance the range to the size of the extent of looking forward when you, when you know you have a pre-existing map you know that you got to an intersection and you can actually uh, look further out towards the side at the expense of looking forward which is okay when you're at a stop sign you don't have to see more than 50 meters ahead of you when you're at a stop sign but you would really like to see 150 to 100 meters to the side uh, all, all of these seven capabilities are not supported by any other lidar that exists Uh, you know, any li any lidar we do, it goes through uh, the full battery of tests you have to go through to to be qualified to be automotive grade. This is what we did on the on the mechanical lidar. You, you, typical temperature, wide temperature range, uh, vibration, shock, uh, ensuring it's eye safe under all operating con conditions, <coughs> lifetime, UV exposure, uh, indirect sunlight for for the entire lifetime, and so on. That's the, our first vehicle. Uh, you get with uh, with the kind of data you see in it uh, as as you're driving around in real time you see uh, uh, the different layers from each uh, lidar one of our customers Renault you know the sister company of Nissan uh, uh, basically we had used four of our lidars uh, this this was the mechanical lidar um, they put them in four corners and they drove around. Uh, it, it basically, it, it turned the vehicle uh, to, into an autonomous vehicle. They did some highway driving, cone detection driving. Um, they, they were up and running very quickly because they took not only our uh, hardware, but also our software, our perception software. And um, they, they were able to, to uh, collect nice videos. Any snapshot I have of a video, I actually also have the, the full video on, on this laptop. So if we have time at the end, if you're interested, I have tons of videos. Let me just keep track of time. 300 meters is the maximum range. What's the minimum range? Oh, good question. The minimum range for the mechanical LiDAR, which is the one used here, uh, is um, one meter. The minimum range for the solid state LiDAR is 10 centimeters. So if it's mounted, let's say, in a behind the grill or in a, in a uh, you know in a bob in a bumper, uh, let, let's say the way we mounted it in the in the red SUV, it was behind the grill. Uh, 
basically if you stand right against it and your legs are touching the bumper, you're more than 10 centimeters away from the sensors. So in terms of time, okay. Mm. We have to 5, 5.45, uh, yeah. Eight in the camera will go off. We have some ah, time. Is that right? Okay. Yeah. So this is beaming to where? Um, All over the world. Uh, is it, so streaming live uh, yep. to folks who sign up for this? The camera will go off and then you can tell us the real truth. <laughs> <laughs> Before we look at the real truth. Uh, I'm not going to joke about this. That's an old joke around here. <laughs> you can say April Fools, you made everything up. <laughs> <laughs> two, two more days to that. It's uh, March 30th today. Um, ADAS, you know, uh, ADAS, as you know, is Advanced Driver Assist System. We can support all the ADAS functions. Uh, and you can sh see them here. Lane keeping, park assist, uh, and uh, so on. Uh, Can you do bus detection? Did you say bus? Yes, remember Google? He couldn't do oh, a bus <laughs> from another bus. <laughs> Can you do bus detection? Yeah. yeah. So, and, you know, in all fairness to Google, this was a... Uh, I know. This was a it's software. a bad joke, sorry. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 it was, the algorithm was, you know, programmed to, to assume that if you pull in front of a bus and it's doing less than 20 miles per hour, most likely it's going to slow down. They have not seen how bus drivers drive in the Bay Area. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and all the ADAS system that typically had uh, some long range, narrow field of view, short range, wide field of view, radar, and some video cameras might have like this, might have a configuration like this. Everything is, is color can be, in, in color can be seen. The hashed area is, uh, are the blind spots, so you don't have full coverage of the blind spots, and you certainly don't have any visibility for what's coming at you from uh, at an intersection, from side, uh, side streets. Uh, with two LIDARs, you get this kind of coverage uh, all around. Um, how, long, how are you getting straight behind what this is a military truck, and, and we put the lidars on the roof. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you got because the sensors are not. Uh, you can't put it behind metal. Right, right. It, it, it's line of sight. It does not go through metal. Right. So in this case, you know, because it's a, w with a passenger vehicle, you have to worry a lot about the aesthetics, the aerodynamics. But a big honky truck, you don't care. So this is like a deuce and a half, two and a half ton military truck. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So you, 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 if you stick them on the roof, you you, you can. When, when you get beyond the, the shadowing effect, you start to see the back. Will you be getting into the actual technology of what makes these things work? And yeah, they... yeah, you know, uh, I'm covering the, uh, the hardware. I showed what the chip looks like and how it works and so on. Uh, we'll get into, we still have 25 minutes, yes. Uh, this is the configuration. So very quickly, I mentioned previously what a typical configuration made out of Eight, eight cameras, six radar, twelve ultrasonic sensors. If you add a mechanical lidar, because you cannot, it's you cannot use it to support a uh, a safety critical function uh, by itself, and it, you you only add it on top of the existing suite. If it's a solid state lidar and you can count on it running reliably, you drop most of the other sensors. You keep you keep two radars. So a system that's basically the kind of autopilot system you hear about these days that's, that works on the highway on, on, on a sunny day, if there is no shading from a tree on the highway and so on, it costs about 4,000 total. You add a couple of LIDARs. If it's our mechanical LIDAR, you add 2,000. Others, other mechanical LIDARs, you add 2 times 8, 16, so it counts 20. And the solid state LIDAR plus 2 ra radar is 1,000 bucks. Uh, How many nines does that get you? How many? How many nines? You said 10 nines is what you need. Oh, for yeah. Thomas, how much with the two? That system you've got up there for a thousand, give you. Yeah, we, we our goal is to get to ten nines. Uh, we uh, we can. Uh, I know it's it's a, a very challenging. We uh, we can get eight nines, and uh, we just it's uh, we have to keep pushing the technology. How many false positives? Mm. How many false positives? Uh, so with with uh, with eight nines, that's one out of. You know, uh, 
so eight, eight nines is uh, uh, your pulse positive one pulse out of say it again. Your false positive and false negative rate is the same. False positive versus uh, false negative. It, it really depends on the scenario. It, it, it really depends on the scenario. When you stop, when you shouldn't have. Right. So it's it could be false positive or, or false negative. It's uh, you know it's uh, one out of uh, about uh, one out of about uh, uh, yeah one about in, in one in ten million situations. So you, you might miss one out of ten million things that you should have picked up. Yeah. Right. Is that a sensor restriction, or doesn't that go through an awful lot of software before it you does go through a lot? Of, uh, so this is a system uh, answer here. Yeah. All things considered, so with the software, we're going to keep improving things to get to uh, the closer to the ten nines. That's going to be all software work because the sensor is what it is, and uh, it's a matter of interpretation and uh, making the artificial intelligence smarter and smarter with uh, deep learning. Uh, we, we have our systems on the garbage trucks of the city of Sunnyvale, basically, and uh, they, they detect sometimes, you know, a garbage truck is backing up out of an alley and they don't see well what's coming at them and they get into accidents and so on. I can give you lots of scenarios. We can do object detection tracking classification, color coding for each object, uh, you track it, uh, and uh, you do sc scenario analysis, and then you you d you decide on, uh, uh, on on an action action plan based on the scenario. Actual trucks of uh, you know of the city of Sunnyvale, it's with specialty solid waste and recycling. We have, you see, we, there's one lidar here and uh, one lidar here. City of San Jose is uh, mapping. Uh, a corridor for us. Uh, uh, so we launched the solid state lidar uh, at, at CES. Uh, this is the Dr. Michael Hafner, who's uh, the senior VP of products at uh, Daimler, co-announcing with me on stage at CES the the solid state lidar. Um, so this is well. This was a big deal for us because this is what we are all about. This is the what allows us. This is the entry point into this all these applications. Then we make the solution robust and powerful through software, but this is the enabling technology right here. Uh, the, I showed you this vehicle that uh, they gave us. It, it was running live at the CES. Basically, when, you, when you're looking at a person, you, know, you, you see the, uh, the contour of uh, their bodies. Uh, you know, a live image, a video would, would look nicer because as they move around, you can see how, how, how the shape changes. This is the demo done with our LiDAR, a video uh, in front of a rain curtain that, where the, that was getting heavier sometimes uh, at the, the NVIDIA booth at CES. And you can read for yourself what Brad Templeton, uh, who is an autonomous vehicle expert, wrote just based on him standing there and watching the demonstration. Basically, when the, when the rain got heavy and the vision failed, the LiDAR kept detecting. We can see through rain. The laser. What's that? You count every rain drop. Oh, you can count the rain drops. You can count the rain drops when you're driving through a a a a, a, a uh, an area that has lots of trees. You can actually count the leaves if you want. The information is there. You just have you just you just have to ask for it. How does the sensor work? Uh, we send a uh, so. Let's focus on the solid state sensor because it works differently from the mechanical light. The mechanical lidar is much easier. Uh, of course, but we were interested in your product. Not the oh, they're, they're, they're both our products. Okay. We, we also make a mechanical I'm lidar. I'm sorry, thank you. Yeah, that's no, okay. Uh, the mechanical sends one pulse, detects it with an APD, uh, measures the time of flight. It's a time of flight measurement. Uh, this is also time of flight, but this is different. This now, here, the detector operates in Geiger mode. Uh, so the digital mode, uh, which is basically photon counting mode. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that, that's why the company is called the Quanergy. We, we, we count uh, quanta of optical energy. So you are quantum limited? We, we, well, you know, we are. We, <laughs> I'm close to quantum cl limited. Close to quantum you limited. Well, you know, we, uh, once you count, uh, once you, you detect a photon, there is what's called a dead time. We're trying to make that as small as possible. 
to be able to, to count the next photon. Uh, we uh, we send the f photon pulses that are coded. So that, that, that's a pulse strain, typically uh, about 10 pulses per shot uh, that's coded. So when the signal comes back, we have, we have a uh, uh, match filter that uh, detects the signal out of the noise. When you look at the signal coming back, it looks like all noise. But when you run the match filter, it picks out the signal based on the code. But pseudo-random. Pseudo-random. That's exactly right. Uh, as, as GPS does these days. You know. um, so th th that's the process. Pulse train, uh, coded, uh, and uh, detection. And we do uh, a spatial temporal co correlation to ensure uh, the, uh, that we are uh, detecting a signal that's the, a, a real signal, not, not a false signal. So um, we have a SPAD array, single photon avalanche diode array on the receiver side. Behind it, there's an ROIC, readout integrated circuit. Together, they make a receiver. Detector and ROIC make a receiver array. Um, so we, um, uh, you know, we do the detection, we do the single photon counting with the, with, with, with the SPAD array. Uh, now, the SPAD, uh, any, any SPAD array has an active area and a, uh, an area that has the circuitry. So you have a fill factor for the active region. Uh, we have a good fill factor. So often the fill factor is about 5%. We have 25% fill factor. But still, you don't want a signal to come back at you and, and hit a dead area that does not have an active zone. So by design, we defocus the signal that comes back. So it hits at least a couple of uh, pixels in each dimension. Uh, and that, that, that's now uh, a special uh, uh, correlation. Uh, you want multiple adjacent uh, detector pixels to pick up the signal for you to say that I have a real signal. So we have the, the code, we have the spatial correlation, then we have the temporal co correlation. Each one, as opposed to zero in the, in the, in the pulse strain, has to give the same information on the range. Um, and when all the pulses in the pulse string give you the same information you have, now you have temporal correlation. The, the time of flight measure is the same for all of them. When you combine all these three measures, uh, y you have rock solid detection, even in a high noise level environment. This is uh, the kind of map we can collect by driving once. Uh, this is our uh, office building here in, in Sunnyvale. Just by driving once around the block, you get this kind of uh, dense uh, point cloud. We can zoom in. This is this one of the turns here, and you look at uh, once you collect the once you collect this point cloud, uh, you know, in a what's called a bag file, uh, it be it becomes an environment that you can actually do a fly through. Uh, on your computer, and it, it's uh, you can you can actually fly through uh, just like in a video game, and uh, take a still like this from from any perspective. Um, so this here we're doing a fly through close to the ground. Uh, it it shows you a high level of detail. The uh, you can see the curvature of the road, the curbs, the lane markings. Now the lane markings. Keep in mind, I'm only showing you now height. Let, let, let me take you to this. You can do uh, color coding based on intensity. In this case, the lane markings, the right turn signal, the stop signs, are they really stand out. They really jump out at you. But even when you look at uh, just the height, uh, the resolution is so high that the thickness of the paint is picked up. Just based on height, you can see where the lane mar markings are. And that's how you read the product. And you can read traffic signs that way. You can read traffic signs based on uh, any difference in reflectivity between the lettering and the background. But you can also do it just with video. Just, just use a $3 cell phone camera. But this is a situation where we said, you know, you can actually, you can count the, uh, the leaves of, of, on, on a tree. Um, We've done many applications. We pre-map a course. This is a WRC rally uh, uh, race course that we pre-mapped for Hyundai. Um, 
so they can take very detailed notes before they, they, do, they do the race. It's not allowed to do, do, do it during the race, but it, it, it's perfectly fine to do it before the race. And, and then, then take detailed notes and now use your handwritten notes for, for more accurate uh, information. Uh, we can do global positioning of point clouds. Uh, we can overlay uh, our point clouds on top of satellite imagery, and you can see any uh, changes uh, day to day in in the scenery. Uh, and you can position yourself, and you can detect the changes. Yes, sir. Isn't this all, all representations of how your software interprets the data? I still don't understand how the sensor itself works. What are the phenomena that you're using in order to collect this data that you're showing us here? We are connecting. We have a we have a time of flight uh, sensor. We have an IMU, right, inertial measurement unit, which is uh, accelerometer and and. But for instance, how many pixels? What are the dimensions of the sensor? How is it that you're determining the time of flight? Uh, what is the emitter? I don't know if these are lasers being put out, but they seem to be blasting the world with energy. What mm. kind of energy does it take? Okay, so you're referring to. Uh, when you blast the world with energy, it's uh, it's called the flash lidar approach. We don't do that. What we, do you do? I'm sorry. We do. We have much smaller. We do serial uh, illumination as opposed to parallel illumination. The flash lidar does illumin illuminates the entire scene with one big uh, spot. Uh, they flash the entire scene. That means the power has to be very high. They use a uh, laser that's on, on the order of 100 kilowatt in power, very expensive. To make that eye safe, you go to 1550, you cannot detect in silicon anymore, you go to gallium arsenide, 100 times more expensive. That's why those systems cost between 100 and 200,000 dollars. So what do you do? Uh, serial. serial. Okay. I have a small spot that hops around a million times per second. That's what I do. They flash the entire scene. So if you're a million times per second and your failure rate is one out of ten million, you got a high failure rate. But that's fine. That's fine because uh, you're collecting so much information that, uh, and you're putting it all together, and it has to make sense. Um, if especially the one false signal that does that does not repeat because it's with some random noise, then you know you know what you're dealing with, and you're gonna you're gonna eventually. Very quickly, you're going to realize that that was a false return. Uh, you're, you're running at uh, 30, 50, 100,000 frames per second. And if one of these frames has one dot that's uh, one point cloud point that's uh, erroneous, you'll figure that out very quickly within a small fraction of a second. Nine nines is actually uh, a billion, not 10 million. Say it again. Nine nines is a billion. Yeah. yeah. Ten is ten billion, at least in the, in the United States. I don't know what they do in England. It's two point two times. Yeah. Uh, our closest partner for the for the advanced processor is NVIDIA. We use their X1 platform for for deep learning. It has to be much cheaper for this to go into in every vehicle. But for vehicles that collect data to, to do deep learning and build a, uh, a strengthen the algorithm based on driving around, learning, teaching, teaching the algorithm, uh, correcting it in, uh, in post processing and so on, uh, you know that, that that's a very powerful platform. Very powerful platform. Um, I'm gonna be focusing on that topic at uh, GTC next week. So w when we collect a, a point cloud uh, data, you know, the PCL steps basically involve uh, point cloud collection. There is a, uh, you snap all the frames to the same coordinate system based on the IMU information. So you have a, uh, a point cloud that's, that's basically uh, clean where everything is, is uh, in the same coordinate system. You apply some filtering, you know, Kalman filtering. Uh, you do segmentation. Uh, beyond that, you do surface reconstruction based on the segments that you identified uh, after you've done clustering. 
and uh, then we do object classification. You can do it beyond that model fitting and uh, and uh, more realistic look. Give it a more realistic look based on 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 the model fitting. We we have data coming in from the lidar, from the IMU, and uh, vehicle data on on the speed. Uh, 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 steering angle, uh, direction of tires. Uh, the, the vehicle has lots of information, and each OEM decides, you know, how much to give you. We have our big wish list of what you would like to have, to have the most robust uh, set of inputs into our perception software. And out of that comes uh, an, an, an object list. Uh, now, now you basically you uh, you have positioned yourself. Uh, it, it's it's you know you have determined uh, where the ground plane is, where the objects are, what uh, each object is uh, is doing, and you put out a constantly refreshed object list. Typically, most OEMs just take that list from you and they take it from there. Uh, yeah, they just tell them ten to a hundred times per second what you're seeing, where where everything is. That's all they need. And from frame to frame, did you'll track the the, the movement of things? Um, so uh, five to thirty hertz uh, PCL point cloud is, is what uh, automakers ask for. We can go hundred thousand hertz, but that's uh, uh, you know that's a strong capability that's beyond what they ask for. It's just it's a, it's a bonus that they get. Um, in terms of the formats, PCL or ROS today and ADTF uh, in, in, in the future. We do have uh, this feedback process where we, our sensors collect data that gets processed uh, and our LiDAR software now puts out a map and uh, that basically it, it collects the delta between the map you saw and the map that exists feeds that to the cloud to update the cloud and the map then that in the cloud now everybody else is feeding their data and you they, they and you get assisted with map assist based on everyone's data to, ref, to refresh your own uh, base map and um, that allows us to uh, keep our maps up to date on b both the base map on and um, Really, most importantly, the base map, and then the, what, what you detect will, will actually allow you to detect objects uh, on top of the base map. So we have this ability to, to uh, do real-time uh, 3D mapping, uh, which allows us to communicate uh, road and weather quality conditions, allows us to uh, communicate tra traffic observations, um, flow conditions of, of the traffic, uh, objects, accident, Obstacle debris uh, in in, uh, in real time with centimeter accuracy. Uh, we have uh, lane level. We build lane level as, as street maps. Uh, the infrastructure is mapped uh, all all with centimeter accuracy. We have uh, we, you know, a full array of location based services uh, that's included in this uh, capability. Uh, I presume your centimeter accuracy refers to the distance, but there's also an X, Y, you're trying to scan thousands of right, pixels right. or megapixels in order to get a decent image instead of isolated points. Yeah. How so, frequently do you get back to each point and at what angular dispersion? At 30 meters, you, uh, at 30 meters you get one centimeter accuracy in, in, all, in all the dimensions. Uh, in uh, depth, in X, and in Y. And all of that becomes uh, about three centimeters at, at 100 meter. And how frequently do you get back and refresh everything with that accuracy? Uh, with every uh, frame. Uh, and the frame rate is software controlled by the algorithm based on the scenario. It's uh, 10 to 100 times per second. So you don't have a, a higher pulse repetition frequency or anything like that? Uh, no, typically, the, the the pulse repetition itself is constant, uh, and, and uh, how many pulses we have per shot is constant. But how many shots we use to collect each data point that we, the algorithm decides on the fly. Any object that's uh, nearby and reflective and so on, one shot. 
if you want to see something very far, you get a, a weak return from something that's uh, very far, and you want to collect more information and identify its shape and its nature and so on, uh, you can actually send multiple shots so and accumulate and fill your bins of the bins of your histogram and using what's called TCSPC, time-correlated co single photon sensing. Go ahead. So what's the upper limit that you want a, a consumer vehicle to drive? You know, 200 okay. kilometers an hour? Oh, that, that's, fine. that's fine. That's fine. No, absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. Uh, a vehicle moving at 200 uh, kilometers per hour is almost like a car. Out of bound speed. Out of bound speed. Right. That's like it's it's basically standing still for uh, for uh, compared yeah, co compared with the speed of light. Right. <laughs> what is the local storage of memory taking into account tempor mm. temporal filters that can be fairly deep? Yeah. Uh, so, are you asking about the platform we use for the storage? Or are you asking about uh, so much memory is available for? Yeah. The, you know, the there's uh, there's uh, there's local buffering inside the sensor, and then we have uh, in the vehicle, but outside the sensor, we have uh, you know terabyte solid state uh, drive. Uh, were you asking about the type of uh, uh, storage we use? Yeah. Um, so we have both the storage on chip. Uh, uh, and then we have the uh, uh, post processing. Then we, we we have the data post in vehicle processing. We have everything stored on uh, on a solid state drive. That's good for a day or a minute or hour. It, it's good for it's good uh, a, a terabyte is good for five days if you drive eight hours in a day, collecting at the highest resolution. Oh, okay, I see. We're, uh, uh, so, you know, just uh, this is actually a bit, uh, one of my last slide. Just to give you an idea, some public customers I can talk about the Daimler Group, Mercedes Freightliner, Hyundai Kia, Renault Nissan, OE for OEM, our top uh, tier one partner for, for system uh, uh, on the system level is Delphi, on the component level, which is called the tier two, it's Sensata te Technologies, which is uh, the former sensor division of TI. Uh, so the timing is good because that's it. I'm, I'm done. Uh, we have seven offices uh, globally, so, and we are hiring <laughs> lots of software people. So, so thank you for your time. 50, yeah.